Hello. And uh, for those of you who are wondering what I did with the money that some people have given me on PayPal, I've bought this nice set of cordless headphones um, with a built-in mic. So hopefully the sound quality will be a bit better from now on. Now, I'm going to talk today about gold and gold coins specifically because people at this time of the year very often buy presents for their loved ones and some of them, if they know their loved ones um, are gold nuts, they will be buying coins. So what to buy? Um, the basic thing is you need to buy coins that are recognisable, especially if you're thinking about resale. Now the thing about resale is that very often you're going to be selling to somebody who knows next to nothing about gold coins. So having some weird Czechoslovakian one ounce gold coin, they're not going to recognise it. They've got no way of knowing if it's a fake. Um, so I'm going to give you my usual advice, which is that the best gold coins to buy are either eagles or sovereigns. Now there's some pluses and minuses to both. Sovereigns are recognised the world over thanks to the British Army using them um, back in the days of the colonial empire. Even people on remote islands in the middle of the Pacific will recognise a sovereign when they see it. And uh, eagles are recognisable to anyone who uh, basically lives in the US. They'll have seen silver eagles, they'll have seen probably gold eagles. So these are good coins to buy. Um, if you're looking at silver then Canadian maple um, or American silver eagle are the two really to go for. Now with gold coins you have a particular problem and that problem is called tungsten. Now there are a lot of fakes about and these are basically produced by taking a tungsten stamping of the coin, basically they will duplicate a coin and make it in tungsten, then they'll gold plate it. And unlike uh, electronic gold plating, this is not a flash gold plate. This will be actually a very thick gold plate on the order of 0.1 of a millimetre, which might not sound very thick, but it is thick enough to fool an awful lot of gold coin testing machines. And uh, the thing about a gold plated fake is that if you apply a standard test for precious metals, which is basically you rub it on a stone and then add test solutions, then it will come up saying that it's gold because obviously what you've rubbed is the gold plating. And there is literally, um, until the test which I came up with, no way for people to distinguish gold coins and um, the fakes without actually damaging the coin because the only real way to do it is drill a hole through it. Um, the reason for this is that the material that they make fakes from, tungsten, is very hard and difficult to drill through. Gold is soft and easy to drill through and uh, there are other differences as well. Tungsten's got a very high melting point and uh, it's something like three times that of gold. So if you were to melt one of these gold coins then you would be left with a tungsten disc. Um, I've actually talked to somebody in the precious metals industry and what they do is they buy gold coins in bulk and they buy a lot of other types of scrap gold as well. They melt it down and make it into very, very fine wire. This is this particular company. And that fine wire is used to stitch chips, as in ICs, onto their lead frames using an ultrasonic process. Um, that's very important that this gold is ultra pure, so they do a lot of refining. And I've got a couple of talk stories to tell you about that, but they certainly find a fair few of these fakes. Now, you can't tell by the weight 
because the density of the metal tungsten is almost identical to that of gold and obviously you can't tell by the size because the size of the coin when plated is still within tolerance. So how do you tell a fake tungsten coin? Well I've got one method and one method only and the bad news is it only works with small gold coins. Large gold coins it won't work because the physics don't work out. All you need to do the test is a plate I've got here a, a bowl and I've got two coins. I've got a gold sovereign and I have here also a British 10 pence piece because I don't have a fake. I've been very careful in avoiding fakes. And if you take the sovereign and drop it so that it's at an angle of about 30 degrees, about 4 inches above the plate and listen. Can you hear that? Do it again. It's got quite a short time of bouncing around. Even the long bounces. You can hear it decays quite quickly. Now the thing about tungsten is it's very rigid and this British coin is made out of steel that's been plated and it's very similar to a, a tungsten coin. Now you listen. The ring time is a lot longer and I suggest you do two or three drops per coin and if you find one that's actually rings out for a long time like that when all the others don't that one is most likely a fake and I buy sometimes from dealers and they're quite surprised because I take out a plate and start dropping coins on it and sometimes I can tell them that I'm not going to buy that coin and they ask me why and I say because it's a fake it's a tungsten copy and they get quite surprised but this all comes down to morals. And what do I say it comes down to morals? Well, really, unless someone invents a super duper way of detecting tungsten coins, which there isn't one at the moment, then you will be able to resell these coins whether they're fake or not, because nobody will know. So if your morality is such that you don't really care, then by all means, don't bother testing, don't do anything. Now, the problem with this test is it does only work with small coins like sovereigns, possibly half eagles, although I haven't tried on that. Um, but, yeah, and if you're thinking about buying a gold bar, <laughs> unless you're planning on drilling a hole through it, then um, don't, because you're now finding out why a lot of the professional investors who buy physical gold don't actually buy gold bars at all, they buy coins because you can kind of distinguish the tungsten ones but only with sovereigns and smaller gold coins and now you're starting to see why the sovereign is the most popular coin for gold investors world over. So. I would say to you, if you're planning on buying a gift for somebody, make it a gold sovereign, or two, or three, or four. And if you're worried about fakes, do the drop test before you buy. If you're buying online, then make sure you're buying from a reputable dealer, and not th from somebody on eBay. Uh, although there are many eBay sellers who do sell genuine gold coins, I have actually returned two gold coins from eBay because I believe them to be fakes. So that's enough about gold coins. Gold price in general, um, since the Fed put its rate hike in, gold price is unsurprisingly going up and uh, it's unlikely really to drop a huge amount 
So now is actually a, a good time to buy gold if you're thinking about doing so. Well, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative and I hope you find my tip on detecting fake gold coins quite useful. So, I'm going to tell you my little story now. And this story is basically that the Iraqis are exporting depleted uranium back to the West. And how are they doing it? Well, this is another reason for buying small gold coins rather than larger. Because the way that they're doing it is they're coming into the side of the gold coin with a tool and they're actually milling out the entire interior of the gold coin. So they're taking about half of the gold out. And what are they replacing it with? Powdered, depleted uranium mixed with resin. That's what they're replacing it with. And this was told to me by um, my friend who works in the company that refines gold for use in electronics. And basically they had a bit of a shock because they got a batch of gold coins in and uh, a batch of other scrap and they did the usual thing. Now the way the refining process works is that they melt it all down into a block and then they have a machine called a nibbler which nibbles off little gold shot. So there's, there's little lumps of gold and the reason they want little tiny lumps of gold is that um, it gets dissolved in various acids and goes through a chemical process and the process that they use to get 99.999% pure gold is uh, a chemical process. Now always, always after doing this they find sludge. Now in this particular case they didn't notice any difference when they melted it. Normally the um, normal gold fakes, uh, which are the tungsten ones, they can pick up because in the melting process the damn things just don't melt. But in this case with uh, uranium being pretty close melting point to gold uh, everything melted fine and uh, it was all fine until they dissolved it. And when they dissolved it they were left with a hell of a lot of residue and they were thinking well you know uh, whatever this stuff is uh -huh, it's discoloured the solution, blah blah blah. So they sent a sample of the solu dissolved solution away for analysis. And they were shocked. They were really shocked. And you have to excuse me for a minute, I've just got to connect my battery charger. And I've just got to stop my phone going off. Very unprofessional of me, I know. So they were really shocked when they discovered this and um, they sent it away for analysis and the chemical analysis was that they had 15% uranium. Immediately they were a bit worried because everyone knows uranium has a tendency to be radioactive uh, but the lab said not to worry too much because it was hardly radioactive at all. It was a little bit not enough to cause anyone any problems unless you ate the damn stuff. So the one place in the world where they have loads of depleted uranium lying around because it um, comes out of shell casings is obviously Iraq and so that what they suspect is that there is some place in Iraq where they're digging out um, large quantities of gold from the centre of a coin replacing it with uranium and uh, this resin mix and then sealing over the edge again with solid gold and filing it into shape or machining it into shape or whatever the hell they do with it. And these gold coins also are pretty indistinguishable without damaging them from the real gold coins. So I thought you might appreciate that tale. I don't know how many of these depleted uranium filled gold coins are out there but they will all be the large type, they will all be Krugerrands, American Eagles, one ounce coins is what we're talking about here because trying to get all the gold out of a thing that's as thin as a sovereign just isn't going to work. So there we go, that's my tale over with and uh, 
if you've liked this video then please obviously like it and subscribe and comment and do all those things and I hope you found these little tips useful. Thank you very much. Bye.